Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Bridgman Public Library Teen and Tween Cookoff, featuring the wonderful, the talented, and the ever so friendly Mary Spencer. Mary. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. So today we are going to be doing a dish from the southwestern part of the uh, United States, um, using spices and such from that area. We're doing a southwest a honey and ancho rubbed pork tenderloin with a black bean salad. Really simple to make, um, but uh, you know, you, a little bit of a different spices. So I'm going to kind of show you guys first what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rub. And a uh, rub is just something made out of spices and something, maybe oil, something that you can actually rub on the meat so that it's, it adheres to the meat and it kind of seasons it as it cooks. So I'm going to start off with two spoons of chili powder. And on chili powder is a chili, and I think you guys can kind of see this. It's basically chili pe pepper, and the, the particular pepper they use for this one is a poblano pepper. And it's a, a pepper that has been uh, roasted, dried, and then ground in a grinder. So this, this is a poblano pepper when it's fresh, and then when it's dried, they call it an ancho pepper. Not really hot, not in terms of like heat and making your mouth really hot, but it is, um, it has a lot of flavors. So, you know, think about like, and a poblano pepper is not a hot pepper to begin with. So very mild kind of pepper, but really a lot of flavor to it. I'm going to use another really, um, really popular Mexican or, you know, Southwestern spice, which is uh, cumin. This is just cumin powder. And, um, you know, I like, a I, you know, you can put a little bit more if you like a little bit more. Really depends on what you like as far as how much you're gonna put in your food. This is some honey. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of honey to make my rub. And when I make this, I wanna show you that um, I'm also going to add a little bit of olive oil and that is gonna make this um, spreadable. So it's gonna make it more like a paste. Okay, so that when I mix it, this is gonna be something that I can actually spread all over our pork. All right, so kind of a nice little paste we have. And then I have my pork tenderloin. The tenderloin comes from the back of the animal. And basically what it is, is the uh, if part of, the, part of, part of the, te the, the bigger tenderloin, part of like the back strap or what you would call that section of the animal. And it's a very, very tender piece of meat. And typically when you buy this in the grocery store, you're gonna get two of them packaged in one package. So if you don't wanna use both of them, you can take one and then wrap the other one and freeze it or, or cook both of them. These are great in sandwiches. This is great as an entree and so forth. So to make this, to prepare the meat for this actually, I have, this is the, the, the uh, pork tenderloin and this feeds about maybe four people. So, you know, it, you kind of cut it thin slices. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of trim off this part of the pork tenderloin. You're going to always find this on there. And I, what I did is I just slipped my knife underneath this part. This is called a silver skin. And this is just a chewy part of the pork that you really don't want to uh, cook because it doesn't cook for long. If this cooked for a longer time, the silver skin would break down in the oven and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But because it's going to be cooked very, very quickly, I'm just kind of poking my knife underneath it, lifting it up, and then just um, kind of slicing it away. Okay. But that kind of eliminates any chewiness that this pork is going to have when you when you're done cooking with it all right so I've removed that I don't worry about the fat maybe if it was a lot of fat I would worry about it but you know it's not a big issue so at this point what I'm going to do with the pork is I am going to season it I have some salt and I'm going to you know season it well because you want to make sure that that salt stays on the pork I'm going to use a little ground pepper all right so pepper salt we're going to flip it over and I'm going to season the other side of it. All right, so we'll do another. And you make sure that when you're um, cooking something like this, basically what we're doing with this is roasting it in the oven at a high temperature. When you're doing, and I'm going to put pepper on this side as well. When you're doing something like this, just make sure that you season it really well because, um, you know, that it's not going to have much flavor unless you put a little bit of salt, you know, a decent amount of salt on here. So now I have my uh, rub. I'm gonna put my rub, half of it on the bottom, and we're just gonna spread it with my hand. It's just easier to do it that way. You can use a basting brush if you want, but if you've got gloves or just wash your hands afterwards, I'm gonna flip it over. 
and then we're going to go ahead and rub the rest of this on. That rub will give this a lot of flavor. You know, it's going to flavor the outside of your pork. So when you roast it, it kind of sears into that meat and it kind of caramelizes and it makes it just taste really super delicious. All right, so there is my pork tenderloin, nice and uh, coated with the rub. Okay, perfect. I'm going to take my gloves off and I will show you then at this point, um, I am going to put this in my oven. My oven is going to be preheated to about 425 degrees and we'll pop this in the oven for, you know, probably about 18 to 20 minutes. Doesn't take very long because again, it's a very, very tender piece of meat. So you don't want to overcook it. And I'm going to show you that the best way to determine whether or not that is going to be done is by using an instant read thermometer. Um, if you, I'm sure your parents probably have one at home. This is probably one of the most essential um, tools to use in your kitchen if you're going to be cooking a lot of meat in the future because it can tell you spot on what the temperature is of the cooked meat. When we cook this pork, we want the temperature to be at least 145 degrees. At 145 degrees, um, everything, all bacteria is killed off of the pork and it becomes really, really juicy. Other meats take other temperatures. So if I was going to be doing beef, um, it would be maybe 125 degrees if I wanted it rare. Um, well done would be 145. So all meat is different. Chicken is always cooked to 165 to 170. Um, chicken is never cooked below that point. So as soon as um, our pork is done, I'm gonna show you how to take its temperature and then we'll go from there. But other than that, I'm gonna start working on this little salad that we have that we're gonna be making. So I have some corn here. You could use fresh corn. You could use um, you know, uh, corn in the can. You can use frozen corn. I'm actually using frozen corn and um, you could use, if you're using canned corn, just like with canned beans, and I have some black beans here too that are canned. So if you're using fresh or frozen, you want to make sure, I mean, canned essentially, you want to make sure that you drain it and you rinse the, the beans or the corn because they, it, it's packed in those juices. If you're cooking something that is like a soup or a stew and you're using canned beans, it's okay to add that, that um you know, that liquid that it comes packed in. But if you're using, um, you know, if you're actually doing it in a salad or you're doing it as a side dish that's been, you know, going to be sauteed, you want to make sure you rinse that off because that gets really, really uh, kind of thick and gloppy. And you don't want that liquid on there. It's just the starchiness from the beans when they can them. And it's not going to hurt you. It's just going to make your dish a little, a little different, okay? So in this, um, after that, I've got some, uh, beautiful. These are just some cherry tomatoes that I cut in half. Uh, you can use a small, couple small Roma tomatoes, but I'm just using cherry tomatoes or um, plum tomatoes, whatever you want to, whatever you want to use. And then I also have a one uh, red pepper that I've diced small. You can use a, a yellow pepper. You could use a green pepper, whatever you want to use. Green pepper is a little more bitter, so you have to kind of keep that in mind. I have um, some green onion and I have some red onion that's chopped real fine. That's going to go into our salad as well. All right. So we're going to throw that in. And then I'm going to add a little bit of jalapeno peppers. So talking about the Southwest, they use a lot of different kinds of peppers for a lot of different kinds of things. There is actually a scale that it was invented by a fella actually in, I believe he was in Kalamazoo or Battle Creek, one of those areas, he taught at a school and he um, developed what's called the Scoville scale. And the Scoville scale is a scale that you can measure the heat of peppers. So if I take the Scoville scale and I, on the bottom rung of that, of that scale, kind of like a ladder, I have green peppers, green peppers, red peppers, yellow peppers, they have no heat. So when I think about that, that's on the very bottom. Then if I go up a little bit more, I'm going to find what we just used as far as the dried chili pepper. We're, we're using, a, we, would say, we use a poblano that has a little tiny bit more heat. Then as we go higher up, we're going to come to what's a, known as a jalapeno. And I know a lot of you probably have seen these or maybe your parents have used these at home. Um, they're growing jalapenos really big. A traditional jalapeno is about 
about that size, so about half the size. Um, but this, but this is right like towards the middle third, or yeah, you know, maybe a little bit above halfway up the Scoville scale because this has some heat to it. And when I tell people to use fresh peppers, what I like to do is I like to taste them. So if I'm going to be using this pepper, I'm going to use, I'm going to cut the top off. And in order to taste it, I just take a little tiny sliver off the top and then I taste that. If I don't want to use too much heat, I'm going to back off on using some of that pepper. If I like it hot and I want to use a little bit more, then I'm going to add more. Um, you know, heat in peppers is really a personal choice. If you like it hot, then go ahead and make it as hot as you possibly would want it. But some people don't like it so hot, so you kind of have to be a little careful. So I'm going to cut this pepper in half because this is really big and we don't really need all of that. But I'm going to put a, some of it aside. Most of the heat in a pepper is in the seeds and the ribs. The, the rib is where the seeds are attached. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that out because I don't want to eat the seeds, first of all. It's not a real pleasant thing to eat. And then I'm going to toss this. But be careful even tossing this down your garbage disposal. When it grinds it up, it kind of forces that um, that heat up into the air, and you can you'll sometimes you'll start coughing because it gets in the air, and you start kind of sneezing and coughing from that heat of the pepper, especially if you're not used to it. And if you're certainly not used to handling a hot pepper, I would advise that you wear a pair of gloves. Gloves will you know keep the hot pepper oils off of your skin, and then you can go ahead and chop them. So I'm going to just chop them, and the way that I do that is I'm just going to cut them into strips just like this you know and you know I'm using how much I want to use I don't have to use an awful lot then I'm going to take this and we're going to slice this into tiny pieces just like this because I don't want to crunch into a giant piece of pepper it's not a really pleasant thing to do okay and we're going to just chop this up and then I'm going to add this just like this to our salad, okay? And it's going to give it just a gentle kind of heat. Um, if you have a reaction to the peppers, if you've chopped them and you didn't use gloves and your hand starts to burn a little bit, the best way that you can remedy that is not by water. Water spreads the heat, especially if, you're, if you've eaten a pepper and it's too hot and spicy for you. Water will spread that in your mouth. So the better thing to do is get a glass of milk. If you've eaten it, just uh, you know, drink a glass of milk. Um, if you've got it on your hands, I've used a little sour cream, something with fat in it. It has to have milk fat in it, and it makes it it makes that um, heat go away off of your hands. So just kind of keep that on, and that will eventually wear off. But certainly, don't touch your eyes, don't touch your mouth when you're handling peppers, because it is not a pleasant feeling when you've got a lot of heat on your hands and and you transfer it. Okay, so I have my um, my jalapenos in here, I'm going to add, I'm going to make a little dressing for this. And basically, really simply, we're going to take um, some um, limes and I've got my knife here. I'm going to cut a lime in half. I like to use fresh lime juice, although if you have bottled, you can certainly use bottled limes. But I like to use the fresh because I just think that that has the best flavor. So I always have either lemons or limes at home and I can, you know, squeeze them whenever I want. If you're somebody who doesn't use them a lot, squeeze them and freeze the juice and then you can use them later on. So, you know, it works out really well that way. OK, um, I'm going to put one more because we have enough of this salad where I want a little bit more dressing in here. So we'll squeeze another lime in here. All right, and then I'm going to add to this just a couple drops of vinegar, and I'm using a cider vinegar for this just because it has a nice flavor to it. Cider vinegar is a, you know, a little bit of a milder vinegar. Um, I kind of stay away from like a distilled vinegar because to me that just has a lot of, you know, it's really, really acidic, and that just has a lot of harshness to it. So I don't, I try not to use that. I'm going to do a little bit of honey in this dressing. All right, so we're going to squeeze a little bit of honey in here. And my honey is starting to get low, so it's going to be a minute to squeeze that in. Hold on one, one second, guys. I'm going to unscrew this, and we'll just kind of add that. All right, if your honey crystallizes, sometimes by the time you come to the bottom of your honey container, it has a tendency to get hard and, and crystallize. 
you can pop it in the microwave for like a minute and it will soften it up and it will make it, it will return it back to a liquid form and you can, you know, use it for whatever you need to use it for. So don't, you know, don't just throw it away because, you know, these, sometimes you end up having like a third of a, a, a container of honey left and it just, because it crystallizes, it doesn't mean you can't use it. Okay. But you could use honey popular in the South it would be uh, agave nectar. Agave nectar comes from the uh, agave plant, which is the same plant that they make uh, tequila out of. So you could use that, um, which is you know, sweet, maybe not quite as sweet as honey. And it kind of has a little bit of, um, it's a little thinner than honey would be, but it's a nice, it's a nice, um, you know, nice sweetness that you can add to it as well. So agave nectar, honey, those both work really well. So now I am going to, and I seasoned my dressing a little bit. So a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I'm going to season my salad a little bit. All right. And I'm going to add a little bit of pepper to this. Whoops. To my salad. A little bit of pepper in the, in the dressing won't hurt. I added some already, but we're good. All right. So I'm going to add this. Just like this. So these are flavors that you find in the Southwest. You're going to find the lime. You're going to find the, um, the honey or agave. They sweeten a lot of things with that. But this is a really nice little fresh salad. And uh, black beans are a typical bean that they would use in the, in the Southwest area of the United States. So this is also something that is very traditional to use in that area of the country. This is cilantro. Cilantro is... Um, that herb that kind of makes salsa taste like salsa. It has that kind of little bit of a bite to it. It's not, it looks like parsley, but it's not. When I do cilantro, when I'm gonna use cilantro, I'm gonna wash it, dry it. I wrap it in a paper towel to dry it. Then I'm just gonna cut the leaves off just like this. And then we're just gonna give it a, a rough chop, just like that, all right? And then, cause I, I, I don't mind if I have bigger pieces in here. I, you know, I, for me in a salad, that doesn't bother me, okay? So we're going to toss this into our salad. And if you wanted to add some cheese, you can add a, there's a Mexican or Southwestern cheese that you could use. That's called a cotilla cheese. That's really delicious. So you could use a little bit of cheese as well. Um, but I, you know, I like the salad just the way it is. But, you know, like I said, you guys can definitely use cheese. I'm also going to add a little cumin to my salad. I, you can put it in the dressing and then just distribute it with the dressing. But I actually like to add the cumin separate because I feel that I really get the flavor of cumin um, by adding it separate, okay? So I have the cumin in here. Then we'll just go ahead and stir this. And I think that that is it as far as our salad goes. So we can take out our pork at this point. All right, and I'm gonna pull my pork out of the oven. magic of television guys you got the beautiful pork roast okay so before you know if I want to check this to see if it is done I am going to take this and I'm going to take my instant read thermometer I take it out of the oven get it out of the oven so you don't burn yourself but you're going to take the thickest part of the meat so right now the thickest part would be right here okay right in this this bottom section um, if you're doing a piece of meat that has a bone in it, like a, a, a steak that maybe has a bone in it, you want to steer clear of the bone because bones get hotter than the meat does. So you want to make sure you kind of steer clear of the bone. But I'm going to take my instant read thermometer and I'm going to put it in about, you know, like, in a, like at an angle, just like this. And then I'm going to read it. And when I took this out of the oven a little bit earlier, this was reading 140, which is good. And I said 145, but... Typically, if I keep this in the oven till it says 145, what's going to happen is when I put it, take it out of the oven, it keeps cooking, okay? Because everything's hot in there, it's going to keep cooking. So if you take it out too soon, you know, it, it, like maybe at 140 or 135, and um, you let it sit and rest, it'll, by the time you're ready to cut it, it will reach that 145 mark and you should be good. If you cook it until it's like 150 to 155, it will continue to cook when you put it on your counter. So it might get a little overdone. So try to try to take it out of the oven at least by 140 if you can, or at least 145. That way it only climbs another five degrees and then you should be good to go. So now at this point, I'm just gonna take this right off of my sheet pan. 
All right, and we're gonna put this aside. And then just to cut this, I just have a pair of tongs and then I'm just gonna start slicing this just like this. It should be very uh, slightly pink in the middle. I'm cutting this into kind of thinner, thinner pieces. You can cut it however you wanna cut it, but this is a really, really tender piece of meat, guys, really tender. So when you serve this and you guys can see, I'm gonna to try to show you a piece of that, what it looks like. It should have that slight pinkness in there, or, you know, so that it, it, if, if it's completely white or if it's like brown in color, it's overdone. It should stay slightly pinkish, all right? So I would cut the whole thing up and then I'm gonna grab a plate and then um, we'll plate this salad and our um, meat. I'll show you how that goes, really easy and really delicious. I mean, this is a, again, if you have some of this pork left over, you can make a sandwich with it the next day. You can serve it with a, a, a just a tossed salad, but I'm gonna put this salad right in the middle of my plate, just like this. Okay, really pretty, lots of really pretty colors. And then I am going to plate this by just basically fanning out my pork right on top, just like this. And that is your, you know, I mean, this is like something that you could serve to company or, you know, uh, at a special occasion for your parents. If you have access to a grill and you know how to grill, um, this would be a great uh, dish to grill as well. So, you know, whether you do it um, in the oven or you do it on the grill, it will come out beautifully. So, you know, a really, really well done um, piece of meat. So um, I hope to, that you guys join in. I hope you try the dish and if you if you enter the contest then i hope whoever you know the best man wins and good luck guys well thank you very much mary that looks delicious and i look forward to trying it thank you once again mary okay. spencer